Hey, this is Corbin Clark from Carmel, Indiana. Thanks for watching Game Notes on the Sound Refs Podcast. Serve the game. Mimi. Mimi. <laughs> oh, every Mimi is a sweet lady. I'm sure she's involved. I, I like to I like to think so too. So <laughs> oh yeah. You ready to dive in? Yes, sir. So uh, give our wonderful audience of dedicated basketball officials just a brief little background on who you are, where you're from, uh, how long you've been refereeing and how you got connected with Crown. Yeah, so um, born and raised Carmel, Indiana. Um, grew up, love for sports. Uh, you know, anything with a ball, you know, is, you know, it was right up my alley. Um, played uh, baseball, basketball in high school. Um, went to Carmel High School here in uh, here in Indiana. Um, and kind of uh, after high school, I have a passion for golf. Um, but you know, after I stopped playing basketball, I mean, basketball was kind of always my 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 first love. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I thought at first, you know, I'd someone say, hey, you, you should, you know, get into officiating. And I'm like, they're like, you know, it's a good way to make some extra money, you know, in the golf business here in Indiana, you know, we, we can't can't play golf outside year round. So I'm like, yeah, you know, be a good, uh, good thing to do in the winter. And then, um, you know, after I uh, got in, started doing some games, um, oh, I, I fell in love with it, you know. Um, I think it's cool, uh, you know, being a former player, um, you know, I think it's, it's cool to see the game from a whole different perspective, you know? Um, and, you know, it, it made me appreciate, you know, officials more, you know, when I, you know, when I played, um, you know, and how much goes into it and how, how, how much hard work, um, you know, officials, you know, put into, uh, into the game and into, you know, their own craft. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, it wasn't the most exciting stuff first year, you know, it was mostly just kind of rec ball, rec league ball, um, you know, elementary school kids. And so, um, you know, but, but you got to start somewhere and, and that's, you know, that's a great way, you know, for me, you know, to kind of hone in on, you know, becoming an official and, um, you know, getting used to being on that side of, uh, of the game, you know, so, but ever since then, um, you know, this is my third season and, um, you know, now that I've kind of got up to, you know, his middle school level ball last year, a little bit of freshman JV, and now this year being, you know, all JV and, um, and some varsity here and there, I, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm in love with it. I'm, I'm addicted to it. So, um, but on, on the side of, uh, crown refs, um, you know, I, uh, my partner, um, him and I, you know, both younger guys trying to, you know, make our way up. Um, his mentor actually had shared a video that you had posted on Facebook, um, you know, with my partner and he tagged me and he's like, Hey man, you know, check this out. You know, this, this is some good stuff. Um, you know, and it was just a, you know, kind of a, a, a mechanics video. Mm -hmm. I checked it out and I'm like, man, you know, I, I this guy, guy knows what he's talking about. Right. You know, he, he looks good doing it. Um, you know, these are things that I want to implement in, in you know, in my, my part of a, or on, on my side. Um, so, you know, I saw that, saw the name on there, Crown Refs, and I kind of dug in a little bit, and um, then I kind of stumbled across the, across the podcast, and, and you know, ever since then, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love it, listen to it, you know, as I, you know, told you, you know, last week, uh, you know, I'm on the road a lot, you know, driving and whatnot, and so, you know, being able to hear, you know, great stories from NBA officials, college officials, you know, game notes from guys, you know, just like me, um, you know, uh, official scouts, you know, um, kind of hearing, you know, kind of behind the scenes of, you know, how, how they did it and how they, they came up. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's a great resource, you know, not only for me, but for, for all, all officials, you know, who are, who are looking to improve their craft. So. Thanks for that, uh, that bio. It sounded great. And um, thanks for tapping in to obviously the Crown Reps content and then more deeply this IPR service. So have you had a chance to watch your game again with the IPR kind of as an old yeah. thing going back and forth? Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, actually, I found it <laughs> super helpful. And I mean, um, 
you know, there, there's not a lot of guys that are out here that, that do something like this, you know. Um, I actually told my partner, I, I shared, you know, my IPR with him, showed him, and he's like, shoot, I'm, you know, I, I might have to, you know, tune into this and, and you know, because I, I mean, I think, you know, going back through, there's things that you notice that, you know, I might not notice firsthand and, um, you know, that's the only way I'm going to get better is, you know, obviously, you know, I, I want to critique my own game and whatnot, but, um, you know, this, this service that you provide, um, you know, is another set of eyes, you know, um, I go to JV games sometimes and ask if it, you know, the varsity guys who, you know, watch the, you know, a little bit of our game and, you know, they have, you know, little bitty things and, you know, obviously, you know, their feedback is important, right. But, the end of the day, I mean, they're, they're getting ready for their game and, you know, there's not, you know, there's not that real, like, you know, in-depth, you know, feedback, criticism, whatnot. Um, so, I mean, this, going through this report, I mean, there's, there's a ton, a ton of information that, that I know is going to make me a better official. And so, you know, obviously that's, that's kind of why I wanted to, to, you know, get connected with you and, and, and take it to the next step, you know. Awesome. And obviously you can see with the report, there's many, many hours of, of deep diving into you. And that's the unique thing about, about it is that, yeah, I watched the basketball game. There was three officials. I was only watching one, you know, there's a couple right. points that I made, you know, about your partners behind the scenes. But again, I'm focused on you. I'm not, I'm not out here watching your other partners cause that's not going to benefit you. Um, so I just want to give you the opportunity I know there's a lot of information here and we'll go through the timestamps, um, but I'll just kind of let you lead. Where do you want to start? Any plays in particular or any questions um, off top that you want to start with? So, yeah, let me, let me pull up. I, I actually got some, uh, some stuff. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I kind of came up with some questions that aren't, you know, necessarily direct directed at, you know, t certain timestamps okay um and i figured if you and i were talking you might bring that up and then we can kind of you know you know play off that but i did have some questions like oh you know in, in general of you okay. know the game itself um but i mean there are a couple times and you know obviously it's, it's something that i'm trying to to work on is my positioning and that's you know something that was that was big and um you know in the in the game you know in the, the time stamps that i noticed um but I mean, would you recommend, I mean, you know, staying closer to that 28 mark? Um, I mean, do you think that's, that's something that's going to, you know, help um, with smoother um, and a little easier uh, rotations? Yeah, absolutely. 28 foot mark is kind of our starting point in the trail position. So we always want to focus on starting there. Obviously, there's some plays where, let's say you're in charge of, of refereeing A1, he's out at the half court line, you're not necessarily going to go run to the 28 foot mark, you're still be right. with, you're gonna be in line with the ball or a step behind the ball. But it's just a general rule of thumb um, for you in your mind, you know, kind of self talking, all right, 28 foot, I'm going to start at the 28 foot. Because a couple of times you were a little bit too high, which leaves you at a disadvantage for the current look, but an even bigger disadvantage for the next look. Let's see, there's a, a drop off pass and now you're, you were out of position initially and now we're kind of one pass in and you're, you're a few steps um, too far back. So, so like we're out of position twice is, is what I'm trying to say. Right. So kind of getting yourself, doing your work early, setting yourself up so you're in a good position for that next look that's about to happen. Right. And, and, you know, obviously you and I had talked about it and I, I think, you know, with more three man, you know, game experience, um, you know, I think, I think, you know, obviously I'll be able to improve, you know, my positioning rotations and stuff. And it's, um, you know, honestly, I've been trying to, you know, in JV games with two man, you know, I've been, you know, the last couple of games I've had, I've been trying to, you know, focus on, you know, Hey, when I'm in trail, make sure I'm close to that 28 foot mark. Um, and then, you know, kind of work from there, you know? And so, um, yeah, that was, I mean, I figured that's kind of what you would say, but yeah, I mean, um, definitely just improving positioning, um, you know, putting myself in the best spot to, to get the best look. So, um, but yeah, so that, that's something good. I'll keep in mind. Um, another thing that I had, Sorry, yeah, keep that, just before you move on, you know, 28 is the starting point, but you can go 
um, even lower than that. There's going to be times where you're going to have to be working close to the foul line extended, maybe on a rotation right. where the lead rotates over, but you're staying on your primary matchup. You're not, you're kind of waiting until the, um, until the whole crew has rotated to then you step back up to the 28 foot mark. So again, you're, you're starting at the 28, but you're, you're going to work above or below it, depending on where the yeah. point is. Yeah. Right, right. And, and I see that all the time in college uh, and NBA. I mean, I see a lot of those guys, you know, they'll, they'll work down below it, you know? Um, and so that's, you know, I, I, I try and take, you know, bits and pieces of, you know, some of those things from those games and, you know, try and try and help, you know, work on, you know, my game. So, um, but yeah, another one, um, something I struggle with is, um, is kind of reporting. And I mean, we talked about, you know, reporting foul calls, um, I was just kind of curious is, you know, is there, do you have any recommendations or, uh, you know, any thoughts on um, how to be a little more fluid, um, you know, when heading to the table, sometimes I tend to, you know, let's say I'm in lead and, you know, I got a foul under the bucket. Um, do you have a good way to like, I mean, make it more fluid? Cause sometimes I'll still kind of look back at the guy checking his number as I'm kind of running. Right. Um, yeah, and obviously, you know, I, and it, I think just with time, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to see if you, if you had anything that, you know, any little, you know, tidbits that it might help with that. So what do you feel uh, unsmooth in doing running, um, reporting, or just the overall process? Um, I mean, I think, I think after looking at the IPR, um, you know, and some of the comments you made about, you know, a couple of times reporting, um, I think I've, you know, gotten a little better and that's kind of something I focused on in the past couple of games, but um, it's just, you know, I, how to be more, um, I guess, more confident when heading to the, heading to the table. Okay. Um, Cause like I said, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, I got the foul, boom, I see it's 34, but then I'll run to the table. And as I'm running, you know, I'll look back to make sure I got the right number. Um, Very common. But obviously, you know, I, it, I know that, probably would be better just, hey, let's, you know, let's get the number right away and then head straight to the table. Don't look back. Don't second guess, right, you know. Right. No, I know the feeling. Listen, I've looked back plenty of times where you're, you're trying to find the number and his jersey is, is not, you know, centered to you or a player right, is in front of him. To... You're, you're moving to the left, right. right? It's an uncomfortable feeling. So just the general rule of thumb again, you call a foul, hold the fist up an extra second, wait there. Right, as the play, as you call the foul, fist, and then see what the players do. If any bodies are on the ground, or you know, you're dead ball officiating on the, right from then on there, but you're also self talking right. in your head. You're, you're gathering all of the information at the spot. So then when we go to the table, there's no looking back. Right, so first thing we gotta do is we gotta just slow everything down. Because if you're looking back, then that means you rushed the the initial you know download right. download of information <laughs> you're right it's a lot right. of information listen it's common common mistakes i forget too so just take an extra second to stay at the spot wait for your partners to switch right okay as, as your partner is coming down to take your new position again you're gathering information all right the fouls on black 34 um white 21 shooting two shots black fouls on black 34 and my shooter's uh white 21 Okay. I have that information. Okay. Now I'm going to jog to the table, right? Clear the players and then stop and then project strength at the table. Okay. Yeah. Black, 34, um, hold, no shot, spot. Okay. Before Perfect. the shot, spot. Okay. Um, yeah. And I mean, that's just what you did there. I, I, you know, I had a couple games over the weekend and, and I, I really tried to, um, to focus on, you know, you said tighten up the numbers a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. make sure we, you know, got a, got a process, you know, we got, we got the color, we got the number, we got, you know, a hit, mm -hmm. um, you know, spot or shooting two or one or, um, and so I think, I think, you know, that, that helped me, you know, over the weekend. Um, but I think, I think the biggest thing and, and, is, is obviously, I think, just slowing down. Um, and like you said, kind of downloading that information, processing it, and then head to the table. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, 
with not a ton of three man experience, you know, I get jumpy, you know, get yeah. jumpy and like, okay, let's, let's get over the table. Let's record it quick. Right. You know, let's, let's keep it, you know, keep the game moving, you know, but, um, but yeah, but it's one thing to, you know, yeah, slow down. It's, you know, we're on my time essentially. So, yeah. um, so that's, that's something good. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a you good know, thing. To- yeah. And you'll find like, as you get, get older and work more games, rushing and reacting is a common mistake across many different, categories um you know rushing a whistle leads to incorrect calls rushing our signals leads to you know not good communication of our signals rushing communication with coaches could lead to bad conversations so slowing down everything across all lines is what you're going to want to focus on as you slow things down the game gets slower you're able to see more and and things go at your pace yeah um and i guess just a, a a quick addition to that. Um, I mean, what do what do you think would be is is considered too far, too close when reporting? I mean, obviously there's a reporting area. Sometimes I feel like I may get too close to the table. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I mean, I agree. You, there were a few times you were a little close to the table. Just do your best to try to stay close to the reporting area. I would rather have you a little bit further away than a little bit right. closer. I feel like when we get too close to the table just doesn't look right to me and it opens up unwanted conversations and new dialogues. You're Definitely. putting yourself in a position to have to answer more and more questions just based on proximity. Right. So if right. we can avoid Definitely. that, if we can avoid, you know, one or two more conversations, unnecessary conversations that we would have never had had we would just stayed, you know, at a normal range. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I definitely think, and that's something you obviously continue to try and work on. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a huge thing. Right. Um, but obviously it's, it's, it's little things like that, that, you know, set yourself apart from, from the next guy, you know? Um, but then, um, before you get to your next point, let's go go deeper into, um, helping you present a more, smoother game both at the spot and at the table so let's just run through some signals and i just want to look at you pre- at, at you present because you know watching you present um at the game i think your back was to me you know i was watching you know you, the table was opposite so you know right. i don't get that full hd of you present right so right just show me you know how you would present numbers let's just start with the numbers you know white fouls on white 22 with the whole all right so as the whole thing no, just 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 white twenty two hold. White twenty two with the hold. Do that again. All right. White twenty two with the hold. Your numbers look pretty good. I like how they they kind of snap out. Just just focus on um, a rectangular area okay. that's like over your head that comes under your chin. That's like the rectangle or the box. I want you to pop the numbers through the box every time. So you're kind of finishing strong. The very last motion is just that that little punch, so to speak, yep. right? Okay. Your hold, don't grip it with your fingers because to me that looks a little bit softer than if you just okay. grabbed it. Okay, so come here. Yeah, because if hold. I hold you, I'm not grabbing you with my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. No, that's, that's a good point. No, that's a good point. Um, okay. That's, that, that's, that's Yeah, like when we present a foul, when we present illegal contact, let's make sure it's illegal contact. <laughs> I, I, I have a couple, um, you know, other clients I work with, with the IPR, and they would, like, present a soft push to the table. And I'm like, bro, that's not a foul. If that <laughs> were to happen in a game, don't call that a foul. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, What's that might, yeah, you might get some you might get some questions about that from a coach. <laughs> yeah, it's just little things. Again, <laughs> I I'm able to see a lot of little fine details that maybe you might not pick up, right? So right. Um, so that hold, same concept, pop it out through the box at the end, like you're bringing it up, bringing the fist up, and then it's like a finale. Okay, okay, a little more, I guess, a little more emphatic, right? Well, yeah, but not too much. Let me see your hold. No. Right, right, but good, good. Looks better. Just that alone so, looks better. And again, both hands, you could use both hands, so don't get don't do the same hand every time just because it shows good versatility and we want to be, you know, we want to be yeah. dexterous. We want to be switch yeah. out there, just like baseball. Definitely. 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 Right? 
So again, show me your numbers and then show me a hit. All right. 22, white. I like your hit. Remember, um, number, I mean, uh, color, color, number. Color, yeah, color number. Enough. Yeah, we got white, 22, with the hit. Your hit looks good. Again, practice the numbers a little bit. It's, you're a little, like, lanky. Okay. Like, it's a little, I know. I'm, I'm a a little straight dude, on. So. <laughs> it's okay. Lanky's, Lanky's been in my vocabulary for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, signals and improving your mechanics are simply a practice thing. Nobody is gifted with great signals. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's practice reps, and that's why it's a good opportunity. I get to see you live present show me you know fouls on white 22 push all right so we got white 22 push okay obviously Did break it up here probably a little bit more so your okay. fingers are too close your thumbs are too close it mm. almost looked like uh you remember that game chinese football you ever play chinese football <laughs> where you make goal posts with your thumbs oh, yeah. And you touch oh them? yeah oh yeah you got the little paper footballs and oh, bro that yeah. was a classic elementary school game <laughs> Trust me, I already know. <laughs> That's what we do at all at lunch all the time growing up, man. <laughs> I'd like to call it uh, paper football instead of Chinese football. I didn't I know yeah. that. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, start, so I want you to focus on your shoulders, your hands, and and shoulders. Make them kind of connect. Okay. So then, and then it's full got... extension out. Okay. Do me a favor. Just turn to the side. I always get a better perspective with pushes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little uh, muffled with the um, background, but it, it looks it looks better. Start right, so, here, yeah, so. full extension, and you know with the push, a little little hack. What makes it look good, I think, is stepping towards the push, okay. stepping into the push. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I see I see that a lot of time at in next level games and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, okay, I'll keep that keep that in mind. Start working on that a little bit. Sometimes, too, I like to add a little side push. Maybe a guy gets bumped out of bounds. This is okay. just another kind of uh, way to present a push. Uh, what, let's say you've had four pushes. Do you want to come add a little variety? Maybe just do a little sideways push, just a little something. Okay, yeah, shake it up a little bit. Not yeah. to <laughs> Be a little more versatile, as you said. Absolutely. Uh, what else do you have? All right, three-point attempt into the make. And that was going to be one of my questions for you. So um, that was coming up. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you. I mean, what what three point signal do you think looks the best? Well, I like the open it's, hand. It's, yeah, the right. Open hand. I want you to do it the right way. The three fingers is the correct signal. Um, okay. I, I will tell you as you kind of move up. People don't people don't care about that. <laughs> right, and right. It's, it's a non. It's just camp talk. It's good content for camps. Like, oh, hey, you know you're doing uh, three fingers when – I'm sorry, you know you're doing the open hand when it should be three fingers. You might hear one or two clinicians tell you that, but then when you go ref the game, it, it, it just doesn't matter. And I'm not saying don't use approved signals, but – Right. No, I, no I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're saying. So it, it's not about, uh, um, I think, the three or the open hand. It's how you get to the, to the sky with it. And okay. yours was just a simple raise. I want it to right. be a little bit more athletic, where your hands are popping to the sky. Okay. So okay. it's like you're shooting, shooting them up, almost like you're punching the sky a little bit. Okay. Whether you want to go three or open hand, doesn't matter, but like try to make it look a little bit more athletic, where maybe you're stepping towards it again. You know, okay. jump shots going up, you're to the left, you're taking a step to the left, throwing the arm up just looks a little bit more engaged a little more yeah. locked in yeah definitely definitely and that's something that's something i've i've been trying to work on um you know obviously kind of before you know seeing your content this year um and you know watching varsity guys you know some of the younger varsity guys you know i i started the year with a you know on a three you know we're going you know straight straight up like this and i've been trying to work on the you know, kind of slower, but a little more, you know, crisp, um, instead of going, you know, straight up, right. you know, trying to go, you know, a little bit, you know, like looks that. Better. Looks and better then, already. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. um, that's something, yeah, I've been trying to work on. But yeah, I just wanted to see what you thought about that, because I've, I've heard mixed, you know, mixed 
feelings from, you know, different people with, you know, the open, the open three signal or, you know, going with one hand up and the, the, the uh, yeah, open fist. Yep. Um, yeah, I guess it's just overall, you know, looking, looking fluid when you're doing it. Same concept with the numbers and with the hold and with the push, that pop, that extra, that little extra umph at the end is what's going to make it look sharp yes yeah, yes sharper stand out a little bit you know obviously you know don't want to bring all the attention you know again it's not about me but um but you know obviously I, I want to look the best be the best out there and you know stuff like that is you know yeah. the stuff that kind of sets you apart so and your chop show me your chop from your open hand stopping the clock to the chop 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 looks good i think i said so that. yeah so yeah and that's that's something that you had mentioned too uh, in the IPR and, you know, I, I went back and, you know, watched the film and I, I, I saw exactly what you were saying. You know, I was, you know, here and it'd be kind of down here, right. Instead, but the you know, past couple of games, I've been trying to get here and then boom, right good, there. Good. Looks strong. Yeah. Show me your block. Uh, okay. It's hard. To, I'm sitting down. So it's hard. Yeah, to, yeah, no, I know. Did you, did you have a block in the game? Um, in what, in, in our, in the one I sent you? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Okay. I don't, I might've, oh, it was the, uh, it was the first, the first whistle of the game. Um, on, uh, I was in, I believe, let me go back here and I got it, I got it up here. Let me, uh, let me go back. I think I had it. It was, uh, yeah, it was at, uh, like six. 655 in the first. Um, I was in C. Um, player dribbles and and yeah, it was it was looking back at it. Yeah, it was weak. It was okay. weak. Right, um, we'll, go, we'll go through some of the timestamps now. I just kind of wanted to give you an opportunity to have like signals practice. So because yeah, hey, no, I I I I I need it. So yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Sure. All right. Well, let me pull up the game and uh, we'll yeah. take a look at some of these game notes. Perfect. Before we look at the game notes, I just want to pull up this illustration from your IPR. And this is, you know, this this might have happened a few times throughout the game. And as it you can, definitely, I can definitely tell you it did. <laughs> okay. And as you can see, I tried to put a, a couple graphics on, show you where you were and where you should be. Sorry about your arm over here. I cut it off. And your feet. <laughs> cut your feet off. It is, it's, uh, you know what? Uh, I don't need them. I'll be all right. <laughs> hey, but you're in the right position. Yeah, right, right. Hey, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> so, yeah, obviously obviously here we're stacked on the jump shot. You're looking right at number 21, his back, and you can't see yeah. the potential point of contact. So, Definitely. you know, let's say you're in this position as he's dribbling. We, we want to still be, be where you are in the green here. Um, yeah. Because, you know, you want to you see in between the matchup when, when he's dribbling, too, to see if there's a reach or a hold. But let's say you can't exactly – get to where you are in this illustration as soon as you see him pull up like as soon as he's getting into his shooting motion you're exploding down like one or two athletic side steps to get to yeah. that position as you're raising your hand i don't know if you ever watched zach zarba in the nba yeah a little bit yeah. does this he, he was the first one that really stood out to me when when he did it how just how amazing it looked and how engaged and how how hard he worked at that last second to find that matchup or that, that potential point of contact. Um, so same thing here, as he's pulling up, you're just exploding down one or two steps and raising your right hand or your left hand as your uh, yeah. signal the attempt. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, thanks to the IPR um, over the weekend had games. And I mean, that was, that was kind of a point of emphasis for me. Um, you know, was really trying to make sure that, you know, I was closing down on shooters a little bit um, and, and making sure that I, I closed down and, and got in the right spot um, to, you know, see matchups where, you know, make sure I wasn't stacked, right? So um, that was super, that was super helpful. This, you know, this, this little graphic, I mean, you know, it's, it's nothing crazy, right? But it, it gets the point across and it shows me, hey, this is where you need to be. And, um, you know, this, this puts you in a better spot, so. So you've had a chance to work some games since uh, you've read the IPR? Oh yeah, oh awesome. yeah, yeah. Feel any difference out there? 
Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, you know, obviously, I, I, I don't want to go into games thinking, you know, you know, getting too clouded in my head, thinking about all, all this, you know, different kind of stuff. But um, I will say, yeah, I mean, it, it's helped me kind of slow down and in the moment think, okay, hey, you know, let's, let's close down here a little bit. Let's get in a better spot. You know, okay, hey, we're getting ready to bring the ball in. Let's let's make this chop look good. You know, um, you know, little stuff like that. But I mean, it's it's been a huge, huge help, um, and I've definitely been able to notice, you know, just the change in, um, you know, my in my myself and my mechanics, you know, over the past couple of weeks. So that's great. That's great because I I literally tell officials when I'm talking to them about the IPR, I said, I say I'm I'm going to help you grow overnight. You're going to feel overnight growth. Yeah. So I'm glad you yeah. were able to justify it. Definitely. That. Definitely. Um, so the opening tip, you know, this is something small, but I just want you to stop the clock a little bit sooner, right? So everybody's – the game's ready to start. You probably should have kind of already been in position here with your hand up. And right. even still, even still now, like you're walking, moving. Yep. You should just be here. I'm ready to go. Your partner looks at you. You're already stopping the clock. So you, it was like a late raise – I just yep. want you to come out a little bit more ready than that. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So I made I made a point here. Um, one of the things that if officials do, or at least that I do, that I feel uncomfortable doing is running and counting. You have the greatest hand count when running I've ever seen. I'm being 100% <laughs> honest with you. No one has a better one. That. Let's I take a look. I appreciate that. Let's take a look. So just just moving and being able to present it straight and coordinated and athletic, and you did that a few times where you, you were running even faster than that and just made it look like I do when I'm walking. What's your secret? <laughs> um, you know, I obviously, you know, I didn't start off this way. Um, you know, I've had, you know, multiple varsity guys come tell me after games like, you know, hey, you were a little high here, you know, or you were kind of a little low or, you know, it didn't look real fluid and How whatnot. And so that's what? How <laughs> dare they criticize that? <laughs> but no, but I will say, I mean, they were, they were right, you know. Um, you know, I, there were times where I caught myself, um, you know, in, in the game and I'm like, you know, hey, you know, this feels right. And I'd go back and look at film, and, and I'd be like, you know what, they, they were right. I, I, my, my hand's a little too high, or I'm, I'm counting, you know, up, you know, instead of, like, straight out, right? Or I'd be going down a little bit. And so, um, you know, using that film, using, you know, some of the, the feedback from those guys, um, I've just been able to practice it right. And, and I think, you know, that's something I want to emphasize. You know, as I'm running up the court, I'm thinking, you know, I'm counting in my head, you know, you know one, right? But I'm also sitting there thinking, Okay, let's make sure we're straight here. Okay, you know, let's let's keep it straight. Um, you know, let's let's make it look good. And so that's kind of just something that, um, you know, I, I kind of tell myself, you know, as I'm coming down the court, court. So good, keep it. I literally don't do it count in the back court when I'm doing a high school game, for fear of looking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I oh, tell I, the refs I, to stop doing it too when I see I, them try to run and count. I say, bro. Just, just stop doing that. Just get up the court. <laughs> oh my God! I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's not as bad as you make it sound. It's, so. it's a good laugh. We're having a good laugh, having fun. Got to make it fun, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I love, I love it. This is, this is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. So here, like, I know, I know the ball handler, you know, went towards half court, but no reason for you to be this high. You okay. can still, you can still rep this perfectly from the 28 foot, and again. It doesn't – it's not going to help you ref this play any better because nothing's happening right now, but we're worried about that next play, that, right. next, that next angle. So, so I guess – so if, if the ball is over closer to me, then I, I would be almost okay in that spot, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But as it starts to go away from you, now then, look at here. Even, even yeah. here, as A1's dribbling closer to the center, lead's about to run over. That's where you got to have that crew awareness. Yep knowing yeah. you got to kind of feel all right my partner's moving over that's prompting yep. me to slide down to see yeah yeah definitely definitely you obviously just forgot yep. here it's not like you thought yeah. the center position yep. starts at the 28 foot mark right 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 no yeah just you know um 
no no excuse, but you know, uh, first first varsity action, and you know, I got the I got the jitters a little bit. So um, a good, good first whistle here by you. Good yeah, this is the one I was. This shot. is the the. Yep. Good. Good. And this was the this was the the block that I it was weak. Yeah. There you go. Right. So chop that. Yeah. Just, yeah, you started yeah. too low. It's just not. It's just not big, and it's not confident. Yeah, I started, you know, kind of here, right, and then it was just kind of real soft, and yeah, instead of you know starting kind of up and then, mm -hmm. you know, bringing it down. So yeah, yeah, definitely. And you definitely. know, what I mean? go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, on on the contact where a defender is moving forward, you know, you might yeah. want to go push here. Okay. You know, defender kind of moves forward into him creates a legal contact you know it's an in-betweener it's a gray area right. you can go block okay. no one's, no one's going to say anything you can go push no one's going to say anything i just okay. i like to match the fouls correctly i like to break it down and like what was this was this a block or was this push in my opinion if a defender's moving forward and pushes into him it's push. a push. but again, yeah small, okay small stuff no that's 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 good to keep in mind for sure I've, I've, you know, I've talked about holding the ball on, on this podcast a bunch of times. Just hold it yeah. up, hold it up like a waiter. Oh, hey, hey, believe me, that that has been, I've, I've been in my head the past like week and a half, and every game, even I did a middle school game. I'm sitting there, you know, <laughs> holding it up like this, and then we'll go here, and then hand it to him, or you know, throw the bounce pass to him, or. Uh, so yeah, so that's definitely, you know, I'm, I'm trying to take everything that you're telling me and, and implement it. So good. Good. That's awesome. I appreciate that. And don't you feel like so much more of a participant in the game? Like yeah. A service I mean, yeah. Yeah. And it, and it, it, it just, it looks better. You know, I, it looks better and I feel better. You know, you made the comment when well, you're holding it low, you look, <laughs> you look like <laughs> you're an old man doing it. Right. Yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> It gives off and that. So then I feel like okay, you know, here I, I, you know, I actually feel a little more athletic, you know, this way, and boom, you know. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm a phys ed teacher, but I know what a 1950s phys ed teacher looks like, and he holds the ball <laughs> right on his hip, and he just blows the whistle <laughs> all over the court. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, no, that's but yeah, so it that's something another thing. That I'm, I'm trying to trying to implement. So, all right, simple play here. It's just an out of bounds, but I know I commented you had a really strong mechanics on this out of bounds. Look crisp the way you stop the clock and your and your point. Boop. Good. Again, I mean you've been repping two three years, right? That looks yeah. You know that that looks college worthy. That you know you look like a college official there. That's that's what we're that's what we're striving for, right? That's yeah. what we're striving for. So listen, this is something like so simple, pointing out of bounds. People make it look terrible sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I mean, um, that's kind of that's another area that I've tried to focus on. You know. Um, but yeah. Here we go. I'm I'm too high. Right there, and we got a little jumbled there. Oh, you're good. You're center there. Foul line extended. Yeah, so you're going to be ready to help out with that play there as the post yep. player, and it kind of curls to you. As soon as he gets on the block, you don't have any eyes on that. But as he curls through the paint, that opens up to the center's look. So be ready to help on, like, low hits and holds. Okay. Um, 538. Rotations trail the center. All right, five fifty three was a missed rotation. Not, don't really need to look at that. Five twenty is the example I talked about in the illustration. Yeah, um, yeah. I and that's something I just that's something I just noticed. You know, I I I need to probably anticipate the ball coming out to the shooter, and as soon as I see that ball coming, step down, close down a little bit. That's your cue, see. right? Your cue already right. happened. You know, um, and again. Defender didn't present present anything there where you kind of need to question yourself. You know, it's a right. pretty simple play. Nothing happened. But again, if if that defender was a little closer, then you're going to be in a vulnerable position and not be able to see. 
So just right, right. there, that, that burst, that one step burst right yeah. into your three point attempt signal. And you're looking yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shoot, even though obviously the defender, you know, he's probably not getting there, probably not drawing contact. I mean, it's, it's not a bad habit, but even on, on plays like that to try and, you know, just remind myself, Hey, let's, let's, let's close down a little bit. Let's get a, a, a better, better angle. So. I have a few um, coaches comments at 421, four minutes and 235. Fortunately, that was the last we heard of him. So yeah. my comments never wound up really manifesting, but still something to think about as he yeah. yelled across the court a few times. Well, and, and actually, I, that was a uh, question I, I wrote down for you is, I mean, um, you know, situations, sometimes I find myself, you know, obviously I, I want to talk to a coach um, and whatnot. But, I mean, to me, it's just, I mean, when's a, when's a good time to, to communicate with a coach about, you know, a play or something like that, you know, w without, you know, compromising, staying locked into the game, you know? Yeah, good question. Definitely not during a live ball, not when you're refereeing a competitive matchup. Right. right. Got to pick your spots. Um, the best time to talk to a coach is following a timeout. Okay. So and if you have something good. to say to a coach, best bet would be to, to approach them following a timeout after their players have cleared the timeout area. They've kind of right. taken a moment to decompress. And I find that that's the most opportune tune time to talk to a coach where they're more level headed. Um, any kind of past frustrations have kind of, you know, been pushed aside now. They're regrouping. Yeah. It's like a reset. Okay. You know, okay. it's like a suit. That, as soon as that timeout is done, that's, a be that's the reset button for them. So get to them as quick as they hit the reset button and before they get back to being, you know, super competitive and fiery. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's, that was just something I wrote down I wanted to ask you about. So. So Perfect. what were the Thank conversations uh, like with the co – oh, there wasn't much conversations, but I, I know he had, he had yelled a few times. Did that, that pop up on your radar, maybe addressing him at some point, or it just kind of fizzled out? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, there were a couple times, I mean, he'd say something, you know, as I'm, you know, over in C and, you know, running down the court or, or whatnot. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I – simply told him, you know, hey, my partner's got the best view of that call or, or of that play. And he'd, you know, make a, you know, a, you know, whatever comment back. And, and I kind of left it at that. You know, I just let him know, coach, well, you know, my partner's standing right there. He's got, he's probably got the best view of it. Um, you know, so that's, you know, that's what he saw. And, um, and then we, we kind of leave it at that. But um, that's another thing I'm, I've been trying to work on is, is my communication with coaches. I think that's where definitely I can, I can improve, you know? Yeah. You want to let the coach get in the last word and this, this pertains specifically probably to like a live ball. Don't like say something at them and then you're running up and down the court. And then as you're running, you hear them answer and you kind of like yelling at you, like right. let them have that last word before you go. Okay. We okay. have the no. last we have the last action, right? right. We, the, we have the last decision. Right. We're going to let them get the last words out for the most part. That's just the way okay. of letting it vent. Yeah, no, that's, no that's, that's a good thought. That's a, that's a good thought. Um, never really thought about it like that, but, yeah, that's something I'll, I'll think about next time I, I have a, a conversation with the coach. <laughs> good, good. All right, you have a hit here coming up. Presentation looks good. Don't forget to signal two shots there at the table. Yep, yep, that's something. Yep, that's that's another that's another thing I've been I've been working on making sure I'm I'm kind of throwing in there. So, just being thorough: color, yeah. number, foul type, number of shots, or spot. Right. You know, so with um, again, these are common mistakes for getting to rotate, especially new to a three-person system. So again, self-talk, self-talk. I'm new yep. C. I'm new C. Right now I'm saying to myself as I'm walking, new C. 
new C. So you're just kind yeah, of aligning late, late yourself there. in those yep. moments. You know, you're, you're giving yourself those instructions, self-instructions in the moment as a reminder. Yeah, definitely. Okay, post and hold. Okay, this is another good play to, to talk about because we have a double whistle on a block charge play. So for you, you know, for you, if you're involved in this play, whether you're the trail or the lead and you have a whistle, you're just going to stop the clock. Okay. Just stop the clock and then see if there's a double whistle. In this case, there was. So take it a step further and, and see if they present a signal. If they don't, then the primary official will come with the charge signal. Okay. And we're doing okay. this to avoid a blarge and to avoid right. two conflicting calls. If we have a double whistle, both officials, it's paramount that they need to just post and hold, which just means stop the clock and keep your fist raised until we have eye contact and there's that nonverbal communication. Then the right. primary official will then take it. What we don't want to do is just stop the clock or even worse, not stop the clock <clears throat> and just come out with our punch or our behind the head signal. Okay. Because next thing you know, if you're pointing that way and then I'm going to my hips, now we've committed the worst error that officials basically can, can commit <laughs> is when we, you know, have two conflicting calls. Something 100%. we don't want to see. No, no, definitely don't want that. <laughs> right, but there'll be plenty of opportunities for blarges. That's why oh, oh, you see oh, those I know. Times. You got to stay disciplined. I've, yeah, I've been, I've, I've had a couple, you know, in, in my first few years. So, um, but luckily they were, you know, as you said, you know, we got the eye contact and, um, you know, making sure, you know, we're on the same page with, with what we're going to call and, and then, and then go at it. Right. So. All right. We get a chance to look at your great 10 second count here one more time. I think you run a little bit faster too. <laughs> Oh, but, you know, just to add another layer to the 10-second count, on plays where you know, like right here, we don't need a count, right? There's right. No, defend, up there, there's up no defenders in the backcourt. Okay. Just, you know, I'm all about cutting out unnecessary movements, okay. unnecessary excess signals. So, yeah, you can start a count. You're only going to get to one or two because you know he's going to be at half court in one yeah, or two. Gonna, yeah, right. Okay. Cool, cool. That's, that's good to – you know, think about. And this is another reason why I, I don't promote running to rotate in the lead. Um, because one, I don't think, I, I think when our, when we're running, our eyes are bouncing up and down. It's harder to kind of visualize a play. Yeah. And number two, it, it, it sets up the C or the, the new C to be out of position too. If he may not pick up a leads quick run over a quick dash over I know right. okay. many times where my lead, you know, he ran, I, I hate saying my lead, my trail, where the, the, the lead in my game or on this play, you know, sprinted over before I kind of was even in my position and I didn't pick it up. Um, and next thing you know, I'm out of position. It's my fault right. for not picking him up. However, I, I, don't, I think a brisk speed walk over across the lane is all we need. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I never really... Never really thought about it like that, but yeah, I mean, I, I, that's, that's a great point, so. Um, okay, here, here's a pretty common play that we see when the ball hits the wire. Yeah, yeah. Just to, I just want to give you the correct sequence of signals. So this play stood out to me. I was just curious why you walk so far down. Uh, honestly, honestly, uh, that's a good question. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, talk to me. No, I was just going to say, you know, as, as I, you know, as I point out to it, just making sure that, you know, um, I guess maybe just to reassure my partner, maybe that, you know, Hey, we got to hit the wire, you know, okay. we're going that way, you know, but, um, yeah, obviously read, read that in the IPR and, um, yeah. You know, obviously, I know I know better now. So, what would you do now? I would, well, ball stop goes, the clock. Right, hits the rim, ball. hits the rim, hits the wire. What do you got? Whistle, stop the clock, take a point, and then hey, we're going that way. 
Yeah, when you take a point, just indicate out of bounds or ball hits the wire. Yeah, okay. Yeah, make sure we said, yeah. Okay. All right. Again, if you want to take one step towards the rim, that's okay. But here, like, we didn't need to take all those steps. Again, okay. unnecessary right. movement. And it doesn't make you look as confident where you're, you're going to, like, have a conversation with your partner to just reassure hit the wire. You know it hit the wire. So next time right. it hits the wire, boop, it's out of bounds, hits the wire, white ball. Okay. Then we just keep it moving. Yeah. You know, yeah. Good. Good, good. Good, yep. good. Yeah, I like that. It's, it's nice to talk about play types. This way, you know, you try to figure out the best practices in order to, to when approaching a, a specific play type. And then you see it again, and then you just apply that information to it. Yeah, so it's, we'll like, never, it's like second nature, right? right? Me and you will never talk about when the ball hits the wire again. Yeah. Because you've yeah. seen this play <laughs> type, and now you know yeah. the correct protocol. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. And it, it, it'll, be, it'll be second nature the next time I see that. Uh, see that happen, so. All right, 709, you took a travel from lead. Right. Which I don't think is a problem. You know, I, I you hear a lot of uh, clinicians, and we read it in our mechanics mechanics manual. The lead, for the most part, shouldn't be looking at feet because the trail and center are going to be able to ref that most of the time, right? So again, good rule of thumb. However, there's no absolutes. There's no absolute. Right. So to say a lead should never call a travel, that's an absolute. That's not correct. There'll be right. plenty of times right. where the lead has the best look at the travel. There'll be plenty of times where the lead has the best look at a goaltender basket interference. Okay. Right? So you, yeah. that's where that's where the rule book and what actually happens meets. That's that gray area where, you know, it, it's all about talent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, C and, and trail, you know, obviously they'll, they'll have a good view of the feet where a lead can, you know, officiate officiate the body, the contact, and all that, you know, as opposed to, you know, watching, watching the feet, right? Yeah, so looking at this play again, would you have called a travel again? I'm just asking. I'm not saying it wasn't. Lead. Rotating over again. Also, when we're rotating, try to keep in mind that I don't want to blow the whistle in this one to three seconds that I'm rotating, if possible. because okay. Because I'm moving. I'm not super connected to the current matchup that I'm going to referee. Keep it in mind. Sometimes you're going to have to. Right, right. So in this case, I would say the trail is refereeing this play. You're coming right. over. You know, I would let the trail kind of pick up the travel. Yeah, I, I would it. say, I. yeah, if I, if I go back, I, I'd say I'd, pro I'd probably let this one go. Um, you know, it, it, it's up in the air, you know, whether he's dragging that foot or not. But, but I mean, it's close enough to where, you know, trail has a good look at it as well. So, um, you know, probably, probably could let that go. Right. And remember, three-person game in the lead position. You got big bodies in the lane. You're not super concerned with feet. Right. right? Unless right. you're in a college game and you're dealing with the restricted area, then you got to look at feet. But not, um, not, not speaking about travels. Just like a defense. Right. There's feet. No, correct, correct. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. So, um, okay, cool, cool. Good stuff there. Um, I thought it was interesting to highlight this play. I thought it was a good no call, and it was, it was a flop. And I know you're going to be working college sooner than later, so I want you to kind of identify what a flop is. Yeah. I, I wish they would clarify this rule for high school. Um, oh, gosh. I mean, yeah, it'd, no. be, it'd be super helpful. <laughs> I, I'm surprised that they didn't this year, especially since the NCAA did. Like, let's get it out of the game. Yeah. Especially in high school, I mean, it's flopping left and right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's some times where, you know, a flop, you know, it, it'll sell it a little bit. But, I mean, stuff like this, it's like, uh, come on now, you know. <laughs> right. So, if this was an NCAA game, let's fast forward a year or two from now. Good no call. This is the signal you're going to do. Okay. 
and we were and we report that report that to the table right right so you're gonna let him score as soon as that ball goes in the rim well as soon as he flops you're doing this then that first dead ball so as soon as the ball goes in the rim you're gonna stop it do do and then um, that's a flop warning um you know white team white three it's a flop warning put it in the books their first warning next one is a one shot class b technical foul okay okay cool Cool. but i'm but again i i you're a college you're going to be a college official so start to start seeing these plays and seeing these signals that you're going to be using giving you okay. kind of, uh, i'm giving you the next chapter yeah no that's that's a good thought and i mean it's definitely something you know obviously i need to you know start start diving into right mm -hmm. Yeah, I know there was one point, I think, at some point where you had talked about, the, you know, getting getting together with the other officials and whatnot. And, yeah. um, you know, I think part of that probably just, you know, don't know the guys, you know, never worked with them in the first part of the game. And so, you know, thinking, oh, should we come together? Should we not? You know, this and that. But, um, yeah, as you mentioned, hey, it never hurts to get together. Yeah, no, and when you're working with younger officials, you know, it should be the obligation of the more experienced official to initiate these types of meet and greets. So I yeah. don't fault you for not engaging, but it looked like your partner was walking right at you for a second. I'm surprised neither of you really said anything, and then you kind of went back and forth long distance. But now moving forward, you know, I want you to have the confidence to be able to initiate these types of encounters because, okay. you know, you're one of three officials. You guys all wear the same uniform. You're all getting paid the same amount of money. Right. Experience, age, you know, let's, let's try not to view those. Let's try not to look at, look at it like that. Just look at right. it. The U1, the U2, we're all, we're all the same here. So, and I'm just okay. trying to instill a little bit more confidence in you to do some of the things that veterans should be doing. Yeah, definitely. No, I mean, I mean, the the sooner I you know build these build these habits you know these good habits, mm -hmm. um, you know it's just gonna make things easier down the road, right? Yeah. Got one more great play to look at. It's a five second violation that you called. Um, yep. Yeah, but this yep. is a great play to look at because this is the common mistake when officials incorrectly call a five second call. Yep. Like seconds one through four are the same duration, but and second then five. five yeah is quicker than the previous four. Yep, and, yep, and, and looking yeah. back at it, looking back at it, um, you know, your your note about that, I look back and I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it got quick there at the end. Here we go. They called timeout, yep, yep, they called us right out of this timeout. All right, let's play a game. It's called count to five. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Oh yeah. Here we go. Count with me. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Five. Four. Five. Yep. Yep. So that's just the height of the moment and the excitement yeah. of the play taking oh, over. Yeah. That's all Definitely. that is. We get excited. Oh, yeah. we get excited to get that last hand out, and and we we can't make it go the same speed as before. Yeah. You know, it's happened all. Oh, yeah. Time. I think it's a really good. Thing for us to look at yeah no i mean it's definitely a, a, a good teaching point i mean that's definitely something um definitely something to to think about you know next time i'm in this situation hey let's just, just calm down a little bit slow down and let's just look at mechanically what we can do better after you do call it let's say this was a correct call good good now point so, Wait. Yeah, finish that. This okay. this to me is like you're shooting a layup, but gotcha. you're not you're not finishing it. You finished okay. it by indicating five, and then that strong point to the new direction finishes the play for everybody. It adds reassurance okay. that we all we have a five second count and we have a new direction. Bam, okay. bam. Okay. We're okay. not leaving them with any doubt. Okay. Sweet. Okay. And that was good how you kind of came on the court to present the five. 
I do like taking a step towards everybody on that five okay. count and then the new direction right away. And then we're good to go. Alrighty. I feel like we're touching on a lot of good points. This has been a really yeah. helpful, uh, valuable session. I hope everybody's getting as much value as both me and you are together. Um, I want to open this up last kind of opportunity to talk about any other plays from the game, any other referee questions you might have. Um, you know, you yeah. got, got another, about another 10 minutes, so shoot away. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, uh, okay. So one of the, um, this is just kind of, I guess in general, um, not necessarily persistent, persisting to, you know, this game. Um, how, how do you deal, how do you deal with maybe, you know, weaker partners? Try to just try to treat everybody the same. To be honest, I, I just, no, no, uh, and 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 for sure. And I, you know, I and when I say that, you know, obviously, you know, I, you know, I'm not, you know, trying to, you know, no, I know, no, I know, you know, put someone down or anything. But for sure, for sure. Um, you know, just I, you know, I, I normally work with a partner. You know, him and I work together a lot, and um, you know, I, I've had games where, you know, it just it just the flow of the game is weird. You know. And then, you know, coaches start getting antsy about it. And, you know, and, and sometimes it gets, you know, a little heated and whatnot. And so, but, I mean, yeah. Well, one thing you don't want to do, and I know we have, we have a good feel for the game, so we, we have a general sense of what our partners are calling, you know. But, you know, Mark Wonderlick made a great point. We can't be judging our partners live. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, you, we're not, I'm not point. watching what you're watching. I'm watching what I'm supposed to be watching. So I can't have a hundred percent judgment on what you got going on. Regardless, no, if it doesn't feel right to me. Again, this goes back to, you have a feel, you can kind of get a sense, but we can't be in there judging after the game. When you're watching the film, that's when you can judge the X's and O's and see if the call was correct and positioning and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so back to 100%. your question. How do you deal with weaker partners? Now, are we talking about just partner is just not a great ref? Does he not have a great attitude? Does he not care? Like, what kind of what kind of ref? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's more so. Yeah, I mean, you get those guys, you know, where you know, like you you and I, you know, we're head over heels locked into the game, right? Sometimes we get those partners who are just kind of eh, here for the check, you know, right? right. Um, and then you know they they're just kind of you know, they're, they're not locked in, right? You know, they're just kind of, like, you know, here for the check. And, you know, meanwhile, I'm sitting there thinking, hey, you know, these two teams are playing for something, right? Let's, you know, let's be our best, right? Well, that's why another reason why I started Crown Rest was to organize a network of dedicated officials. Because I learned early on, not everybody's dedicated. Not everybody cares. Again, right. you got to have big picture awareness about this industry. This is a part-time job. So as, as much as we want officials to improve and, you know, serve the game and have great attitudes, most of, most of the referees are just here on the weekends. And then they yeah, go back right. to their nine to five and what, they're, what puts food on the table. So within that dynamic, we come across a lot of people that don't care. Yeah. But what I always did was I, I'd like to identify early on what type of partner that is. You know, I, I want to help every referee in the world. Every rep yeah. that I work with, I want to talk about plays at every time out, but I realize that's not the case. So yeah. when, when I work with partners live, I don't even tell them about crown refs if I know that they're not the type who, care, who even cares to talk about the play. Yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. I know that they're that type, you just got to do your best job to maybe engage, maybe you know, ask, ask some, some more questions about plays, kind of gauge their interest level. But if you know they don't care, then just do your best job um, to, to control what you can control, which is how you ref your primary. You try to be a good partner. Just because they're not a good partner does not mean you have to treat them like, you know, the same way they're treating you. Yeah, yeah. You always want to be the biggest person. You always want to be oh. you know, the big, bigger person. Awesome. No, that's, that's a great point. So, yeah, I, pre I appreciate you, you touching on that. I think, I think you know, not only – not only in just officiating, but life, those are some great points, right? So Yeah, so um, the, next time you're working games with people, just figure out what type of partner they are. If they're your type, then go all in with what we're talking about and talking about plays and pre-gaming and post-gaming. And if they're the other type, then 
just be cordial and be nice. And it's just a game. And if the coach wants to complain about your partner, then we're going to implement the same verbiage we do if we have a great partner. Coach, I would never speak negative, negatively about your partner. If you have a question for him, he'll be happy to come answer it. Yeah. So don't okay. let them complain about your partner, even if he is the worst in the world. Okay. No, you don't like no, no. Yeah. He's our partner. She's our partner this game, so we have their back. Yeah. No, yeah. That's that's a that's a that's a good point. Um definitely something I can take into, you know, next time, you know, I I end up in a situation like that. So and, um, and a lot of a lot of officials they listen to coaches when they com coaches complain about their partner. They provide them a platform and they just listen. Yeah. I yeah, play offense. Just, I play offense yeah. right away. You're talking negatively about my partner right whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Coach, coach, coach. That's literally what I say, coach, 10 times. So I have it <laughs> looking right in my eyes. Coach, with all due respect, I would never speak negatively about your partner. So please yeah. have the same respect for my team. Is that fair? Yeah. Oh, I, I asked him I a think question, that's, is that fair? Yeah, yeah. I the answer is always I yes. Yeah, that's, I think that's a, that's a great uh, – I mean, I think that's a great way to talk to coaches. And as I told you earlier, I mean, communicating with coaches, especially when it comes to situations like that, is something I want to work on. So, I mean, that's that's great. Um, what you just said was a great, you know, resource for me to, you know, kind of uh, implant my brain and, yeah. and use next time we, we get a situation like that. Because so. now I'm giving you a ammunition to deal with a, ne a negative. You know, yeah. That. Yeah. Negative being that partner that no one wants to work with because he doesn't care. But okay. I have yeah. that. Coach approaches me on that. I'm still, I still have my back. I mean, I yeah. still have his back. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, 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 that's a great point. Um, I don't know how much time we got left, but I did have a, uh, Go ahead. Um, I had a situation over the weekend in a game. Um, but I, I'm in I'm in trail, partners in lead, balls at about free throw line, you know, block area, you know, kind of in between there. And we got two guys on the ground. Um, official blows his whistle for hell ball. Um, and then as I'm moving in, they're still kind of scrapping for it a little bit. So I blow my whistle, you know, to try and separate it. Um, I see one kid there, one, one of the kids kind of lets go. The other kind of takes a swing like this with the ball. You know, he's, you know, in the heater moment. And then, you know, this is after I blow the whistle for a second time, throws it. Then they're sitting there. He throws the ball at the other player. Is that warrant a tech? 100%. Okay. And that's, that's what I did. And I, I sat there at the end of the game and I'm thinking, well, you know, was it, you know, but um, no, I wanted to see what you thought about that. So just to rewind, the first player kind of excessively swung his elbows after the play? Yeah, so they're both on the floor, right? They're sitting, you know, almost side by side, and they're kind of, you know, scrapping like this, right? Whistle blows, my partner blows his whistle, right? And they're still kind of, you know, how you know how kids get sometimes, you know, after the whistle, they're, they want to be the guy that, you know, it's my ball, right? right? And so apparently the coach said the kid for the other team had thrown an elbow. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the kid swung his elbows with the ball still in his hands, and then they let go, and then he threw the ball at him, right? So is only one part like – what I'm trying to get at, is this a potential double technical foul? So this is the thing. I never saw a swing from, let's say, A1, right? What I saw was after I had blown the whistle for the second time that B1 swung an elbow – they let go both of them, and then as he's getting to go, getting ready to get up, takes the ball and kind of throws it at him. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, we want to yeah. look. We, we, we want to kind of play the double tech card on these type right. of plays. We'd like okay. to apply it because we have two players not listening. Okay. Not playing the whistle, right? Okay. So you could look at the second act as maybe retaliation. Now, if if the one player just kind of played a little bit too long and then let go then the other player threw the ball at him, then we can go one tech there. But okay. if there's any kind of excess motion that prompted, that you feel prompted him to throw the ball, do, 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 double technical foul right here. Okay. It's two, and it's a wash. Okay. You know? Okay. okay. But 
let's take a step back even further. What can we do proactively on these plays where we have two players on the ground? Now, I speak very nicely to players. However, in this one particular case, I yell at players. I scream okay. at them. As soon as I see two players jumping on the ground, loose ball, I know we're about to have a held ball. Let go. Let go. Stop pulling. As soon as I see okay. any kind of little excess, okay. you, get, you get forceful with them. Okay. You demand that they let go. In that moment, there's a 95% chance they're going to hear your instruction and that's going to subconsciously tell them to let go and we're going to be okay. good to go. Okay. So that's again, good advice. a little bit of added ammunition. You see two players on the ground vocally. That's where we project strength. We yell at them to try to avoid any kind of negative situation. I think you'll have good success with that. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. I think that's a good, that's some good, as you said, am, ammunition, uh, you know, for the next time I, I get in a situation like that. So um, let me see real quick. I might have one more thing on here for you. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. This is a big one. Um, thoughts on gather step travel controversy, right? There's no gather step in high school and college. So right. let's, not even, let's not even talk about it. Okay. All right. <laughs> All like, right, no, this that's is fair. totally pro rule. We're talking about a pro rule. The zero step, aka the gather step, it's a different game. It doesn't apply okay. to our game. Okay. Do you have a follow up, okay. maybe more specific about? I mean, no. I mean, I guess, I guess for me is you know I see a lot of, um, I see a lot of instances, and in, you know whether it be high school or college ball, where you know a one is you know dribbling from the top, he's going down to the, you know, the elbow, right? And he, he takes a dribble and then he does the, the little swing, the hop into the lane, right? To, you know, try and get past the defender or through defenders. And I've, I've seen multiple officials who will call that a travel and I've seen other officials who let that go. Right, right. So I guess that's, that's, that's kind of, yeah. I guess, the, the kind of the hop step where, you know, yeah, he's dribbling and then he takes the little, here, one, euro. two. I'm looking at a euro right now. Essentially, yeah. Common, I guess common you can... play, euro, you know? Again, this is a case-by-case -case basis. It's it's a play-by-play -play basis, just looking at judging the feet, so. Right, okay. It's a hypothetical play that we're talking about here. Okay. The gather, the zero step, a little bit different from the euro step. It can, right. They can be intermingled in the pro game, but this is the euro step is a common play that we normally see. Right. Okay. You just gotta cool. judge where where that player picked up the ball, where his dribble ended. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, those were just kind of some main, like, I guess, some general questions um, that I had for you. But I appreciate appreciate you taking the time with me today. Of course. And you know, obviously, you know, doing this IPR, I feel like, uh, you know, I've connected with you for life. So yeah. you, have, you have access to me, you know, any kind of, anytime you want to talk about a play, if you want to talk on the phone or, or uh, you know, shoot me a text or email me a play, you know, like the IPR service just doesn't stop now. I want to continue to, to help yeah. guide you. And I know we spoke about camps this summer. So once um, the camp kind of uh, scene has been published yeah. next month or two, um, and we can kind of get a forecast for what the camps are looking like and what, where they're going to be available and open. Then I want to kind of help plug you in there and get yeah, you I trying mean, out for college this summer for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, and, you know, it's kind of the, kind of where I went ahead with it. And, you know, I, I appreciate you being so helpful and, and, and being so personal. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to find people like that. And, you know, you seeing potential in me means a lot because I know you see a, a, a lot of reps and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. You talk to a lot of guys. So I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate, you know, the, the lifelong friend that I've made through this, mm -hmm. you know. So. Thank you for listening to the Crown Refs Podcast. Serve the game.